Thank you for watching Deeper Than Red, Black History Animated. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, share, and comment. Enjoy the episode. Amidst the noise of the busy restaurant, Little Richard scrubbed a stack of dishes. To pass the time, he came up with the chorus, Wap Baba Loo Bop or Wap Bamboo. Little Richard's unique style came from gospel, blues, and jazz artists of the time. Rock and roll didn't exist. When most people think of rock and roll, they think of Elvis. Media, music critics, historians, and even a quick Google search have all crowned Elvis the king of rock and roll. But that's wrong. 100% incorrect. Little Richard came along and created a combustion intersection of gospel, blues, jazz, and created a new sound. Along with flamboyant attire and ethereal high-pitched hollering, nothing like this had ever been experienced before. His music exploded across the country. Little Richard's first hit single, Tutti Frutti, was a smash hit, and then came the success of his next single, Long Tall Sally. But the white-owned record companies had a problem. They wanted to cash in on Little Richard's success. They saw the fervor of white American teenagers over his music. However, these music executives also knew that white parents would never allow their children to buy Little Richard's records or attend his shows. And so they came up with the strategy that is used to this day. Take a black artist's music, pay them pennies on the dollar, and then prop up a white artist to play the same songs, a bit diluted on soul and style, but now this music was marketable to the white audience. Enter the artist Pat Boone with his conservative suits and straight-laced image. As soon as Little Richard released the single, Pat Boone would pick it up. When Little Richard released his smash hit Tutti Frutti, he made half a penny for every record sold. Sounds familiar? Pat Boone made his own version of Tutti Frutti and it hit the Billboard charts. Little Richard released Long Tall Sally. Immediately, Pat scooped this single up again and made it his. Little Richard then made Rip It Up and Pat did the same thing. Little Richard never received royalties for Pat's use of his songs. He was so frustrated with the continual theft of his music that he left the music business and became a pastor. Eventually, Little Richard returned to music, and after some tumultuous years, he came to a place of peace. In one of his last interviews at 84 years old, Little Richard said, I made up my mind that I'd rather have Jesus than anything the world could afford to give. I'm so glad that I know Jesus. God bless Little Richard, the king of rock and roll.